if I could set up the perfect way and means and interactions to be able to meet characters, what would my perfect character interaction setup look like? I spent five years working at all of the Walt Disney World parks with most of the characters that were there to meet at the time. I worked in a variety of locations, indoors and outdoors, fixed meet and greet areas, a few that were roaming around. I got to see all sorts of different kinds of things with characters and got some ideas over what worked best and what didn't work best. I had begun thinking if I could create the most perfect character interaction setup. What would I do? What kind of setting? What kind of employees? What kind of circumstances? How could I make the interaction the best for the characters as well as for the guests? A few different things I thought about. First, would I let the characters roam around or would I have them in a fixed meet and greet location? And the answer to that is yes. <laughs> It depends upon the character and the circumstances. Uh, I think, honestly, I think having some characters wander around and having the ability to kind of go where they want, when they want, is fantastic. It creates atmosphere, it creates excitement, it creates stories in the park. I think you need to have some characters wandering around. But I also think you have to be careful to make sure that those characters aren't ones that are going to create a bottleneck, a huge traffic jam as people are all trying to get their pictures with them. So you need characters, one, that can interact with people. So many of them you want to have the ability to be able to talk, so face characters. But you also want ones that aren't quite so popular that they'll jam everything up. Uh, a good example of this would be like the Mad Hatter or the White Rabbit. They still have some ability to be able to move around and create things. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Eh, the Snow Queen, the evil witch from Snow White, is another good example. Or Maleficent. They have an ability to move around, to talk, to interact. But they're not going to gather huge lines. But they're certainly going to create some definite interesting interactions there. With those characters wandering around, they need to have an attendant to keep them safe, to monitor things to make sure it doesn't get out of hand. But the attendant's job really is there to just monitor and watch and stand back and maybe help an occasional guest. And while they will do some autographs and some pictures, the idea again is to interact and create atmosphere. So I would definitely have some wandering characters. At the same time, I would have some at fixed locations. In particular, the really popular characters that everybody wants to wait in huge long lines for. So I would use the most popular characters, such as Minnie, Mickey, Donald, Goofy, Anna, Elsa, several of the princesses. Those I would put into fixed locations. Uh, other characters that would have unique issues, say Ariel as a mermaid, would have to have a fixed location because it's kind of hard to walk around with a fishtail. With those, you could create a setting where the characters would have the ability to meet people multiple groups at a time, keep them shaded. A reason I mention that is because when they redesigned Donald's setup at the Mexico Pavilion at Epcot, we sent a number of ideas as they were designing it, and one of the big ones was provide shade and cover for the character and the photographer. And, uh, nope, they stuck it right in the sun with the sun glaring on the character. Oh, terrible setup. Provide a means and a way for the people working, the characters, the photographers, the attendants, to have shade, to have cover, to have some protection from the weather. You want to make sure that they are taken care of. It's good to have those sites available to be seen, but there's also nothing wrong with having those locations indoors. Um, and especially if it's a really popular set of characters, having them indoors is good because it means you can actually set up multiple opportunities to meet those characters without it being obvious you have multiple opportunities. And I'll just leave that there. But it makes an opportunity for more people to be able to meet the characters if you have a setup indoors that you can arrange a little bit. Both can work. Both uh, indoors and outdoors are very effective. Fixed and roaming 
depends upon the character. So then the next thing comes autograph books. Autographs became a wonderful thing. And at the same time, they had times where they could definitely be frustrating and annoying. Uh, I would change the way that autographs work a little bit. Right now, they have the guests walk up and start the interactions handing in the autograph books. And to me, you kind of miss an opportunity with that to play with the character to get to know them. Uh, ideally, I think you should have a character attendant up at the front of the line, along with the photographer, and another attendant working the line. So at least two attendants for every meet and greet. And that attendant at the front of the line, as the guests come up, the guests would hand the attendant their autograph books. That way, when it comes time to meet the character, they're not holding the books. They can immediately go up. They can play. They can interact. They can have an actual real greeting. And then after the introduction, after the interaction, after the play, depending upon what happens, the discussion, then the attendant paying attention can say, hey, here are the autograph books that they would like you to sign. And that way, at an appropriate time, you can do the autographs, but they've also got all of them so it can be done quickly and efficiently, stacked up, here we go, boom, 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 get the autographs done and out, while the character's still interacting with them. Oftentimes, you end up with six people handing the character six different books at different times, and if you put the books at a central location, one person controlling the books, those can go faster, smoother, and they don't interrupt and make the interaction awkward. Uh, that's just me. I found I love autograph books. I mean, goodness, we've got autograph books here, but they could become a real awkward thing. So let that tend to control the autograph books. Let them be kind of in the middle of the interaction, not at the beginning. Uh, the photographer, of course, is there as well. If especially if you're in a fixed location, you ought to have a photographer. I understand not having a photographer with the roaming characters because then you talk about the congestion and the distraction and all that. So no photographers with the roaming characters. Sorry, guys. But I think every character at a fixed location should have a photographer for two things. One, obviously taking pictures, but two, they're a backup to that attendant at the front of the line who's taking care of the autograph books and watching everything else. They're an assistant there to help make sure everything goes smoothly to get all the pictures. They're the ones that would control all of the cameras. So if the guest wants to ha have their camera used, let the photographer use it. And again, it can smooth things out. That photographer, a lot of people don't realize, provides a lot of other services besides just taking pictures. They will help with the line control. They will help watch the character. They'll help make sure things go smoothly. They can also interpret for the character if they're trying to talk, if it's a fur character and can't actually talk. They can help pose people. There's a lot of things that the photographer and the attendant, when they're working hand in hand, can make the whole thing go smoothly. No photo boxes. Oh my goodness, I hate photo boxes. They take the worst pictures. They can't interact. They can't control anything. They're terrible. Just scrap the stupid photo boxes, Disney. I know, we don't have to pay wages that way. You also get crappy pictures and miss so much. Forget the boxes. The extra person there is more than worth the pay for multiple reasons. Keep the photographer. When a photographer and tenant are working together, they can have things moving fast, smooth, amazing interactions, amazing pictures, get the autographs, and everything goes great. When you have one, it becomes much harder. And of course, they've got to work together. Give them common training. Disney's been cutting back on the training on both lately, and I don't I think that's a big mistake. When I learned we worked with attendants and characters in our training, and we learned how to work as a team, and it showed when we were out there working together. I think that's huge. So staffing, you have an attendant and a photographer at the front of the line where the character is, making sure everything's running smoothly and doing all that. I really think you need to have another attendant at the back of the line. One, to make sure the line's working smooth. Two, to let people know how long that line is. Three, to close the line off. Uh, Disneyland did this the most atrocious way. I saw two attendants standing at the back of the line where uh, Cinderella's sisters were meeting people. And they're standing there doing nothing while the stepsisters having to control the line and tell them they're getting ready to leave. And uh, what are these attendants doing? That's their job. So the attendant is supposed to cut off the line when it's time to go. If they're outside, 
if you're inside, it's a whole lot easier. You just close the door. Uh, but, but you need to have that attendant letting people know what's expected, what the procedures are. Hey, folks, as you get up to the front of the line, they see you've got autograph books. Give those to the attendant at the front. But that attendant at the entrance is setting the expectations, preparing the people, and getting everything ready. They are a very important part of supervising and directing everything. So for every fixed character meet and greet location, two attendants and a photographer. One attendant at the entry of the line, one attendant at the front of the line, and then the photographer working. And that way, too, you also have an extra person that if something weird does happen, they're ready to go. If you have a group come up that has special needs or make a wish, the attendant at the end of the line can take a moment and walk them around to the other end and make sure they go where they need to go and that they are taken care of. As a well-oiled team, the character, the photographer, the attendants all work together and can create this amazing magical moment that allows the character to be free to do what they do and the guests to be free of worrying about the autograph books and this other stuff and to be able to come up and do what they want to do and have the best interaction possible. So what's a typical interaction look like? The introduction, the play. So when the character walks up and says, hi, how are you? And has a few moments to talk with them, ask a question, answer a question, play. If they see the kid with the toy, they get to interact and, and have a moment to just be the character and let them know they're actually meeting them. Next thing up, the autographs. Let's get those things done out of the way. And oftentimes that can be done during the interaction. If the family has something unusual to sign, like a picture or a gift or a frame or a t-shirt, that can be done then. Let the attendant know. He will cue them when to do it. Do the autographs. Hand the books and stuff back off to the attendant again to make sure that there isn't extra clutter in the picture. And then get your picture and have it all go well, smoothly. Have the photographer scan their wristband or hand them a card or use their camera and then say so long. So that's my ideas of what a great interaction area should look like, the setup, how you should make it work, what it looks like in the park. Do you have other ideas? Have I forgot to talk about something? I'd love to hear them. Please share them in the description below. Don't forget to hit that like button, share and subscribe. I'd love to hear your feedback and your ideas. Please leave them below. Don't forget to check the description too. Tons of information there. You just check the information. <laughs> Thank you too to my patrons, my sponsors. Their financial assistance helps make things like this possible, including the video clips you've seen and so much more. And they get some really neat behind the scenes info. If you want to know more about that, hey, that's in the description. Thanks so incredibly much for watching. God bless. So I spent five years <laughs> like Mickey and Me Meanie, Meanie, yeah, like Mickey and Minnie and Anna and Elsa and what we call the Fab Five. So blah, 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 blah. <sighs> OK, scratch the whole part. Provide a means and an opportunity for the people who are the people. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to know about my merchandise and fan pages and more, be sure to check the description below. If you'd like to know whenever I've got a new video posted up, make sure you hit that button right up there and subscribe. If you want to see another of my videos right now, well, I've got a great one for you right here. And if you'd like to be like these wonderful people here and support me financially on Patreon, well, make sure you check that link right there. There's all sorts of perks and benefits. Thank you so much and God bless.